to the video program, Basic Knots and Hitches, produced by the Girl Scout Council of Greater St. Louis. The purpose of this program is to provide instruction on various knots and hitches commonly used in camping. Through viewing and working along with this video, you will learn how to go from this to this. You will learn how to keep the beaver bag line off the ground, the tents from sagging, and the ropes from getting progressively shorter. You will learn how to tie basic knots and hitches and how they are used. To benefit most from this video, gather two pieces of rope. Watch as we demonstrate each knot. Then try it yourself, following along as we demonstrate each knot a second time. Don't worry about memorizing the information given on this video. Your guide contains notes and reminders. Ready? Let's go. We are going to demonstrate three knots. The square knot, the sheep bend, and the bowling. The easiest of all knots to learn is the square knot. Most people learn how to tie a square knot by reciting the instructions right over left and under, left over right and under. To determine whether you have tied the knot correctly, gently grasp both ropes and push toward the center of the knot. If you clearly see two loops, you have tied the knot correctly. Let's try that again. Right over left and under, then left over right and under. The square knot is commonly used to join two ropes. If the two ropes are of equal diameter, the square knot will not slip. But what if you need to join a thick rope and a thin rope? The second knot we're going to demonstrate is the sheet bend. The sheet bend is used to join two ropes of unequal diameter. It's basically a square knot with an extra twist to make it hold tightly. To tie a sheet bend, first tie a loose square knot. Then, cross the working end of the thin rope over the standing part and tuck it down through the loop of the thick rope. The two ends of the thin rope will each come out of different sides of the thicker loop. Tighten the knot by grasping each pair of ends and pulling. The extra twist serves to lock the thin rope in place. Again, first tie a square knot. Then, cross the short end of the thin rope over the long end and tuck it down through the loop of the thick rope. Tighten by grasping each pair of ends and pulling. When a sheet bend is used to join two ropes of unequal diameter, the ropes will not slip. The sheet bend is useful when a long rope is required and only short ropes of dissimilar diameters are available. The third knot we are going to demonstrate is the bowline. The bowline is used when a fixed loop is needed at the end of a rope. Many people use a story to remember how to tie this knot. The standing piece of rope is called the tree. The small loop is called the rabbit hole. The working end of the rope is called the rabbit. Make a rabbit hole in front of the tree. The rabbit comes out of its hole goes around the back of the tree and then back into the hole. To tighten the knot, pull the rabbit and its tail in one direction and the tree in the opposite direction. Now we'll demonstrate the bowline again using a plain piece of rope. To tie a bowline, pass the working end of the rope over the standing part to make a small loop. 
The distance from this small loop to the working end of the rope will be the approximate circumference of the finished loop. Drop the working end of the rope down and bring the end up through the initial loop. Pass the end under the standing part of the rope, then back up, and finally down through the initial loop again. Tighten the knot by grasping the working end where it both enters and exits the loop, and then pulling on the standing end. This knot is often used to secure guy ropes to a tent. Now we are going to demonstrate how to tie three hitches. Unlike knots, hitches will never tighten to the point where they cannot be undone, even if extreme tension is placed on it or it gets wet, a hitch can be untied. The three hitches we are going to demonstrate are the half hitch, the clove hitch, and the taut line hitch. The first hitch we will demonstrate is the half hitch. The half hitch is used to fasten the end of a rope after it has been looped around something. To make a half hitch, loop the working end of the rope around a post or other object. Cross the working end of the rope under the standing part, bring it up, and then drop it down through the loop. Let's try this simple hitch one more time. Loop the end around the object, go under the standing part, then through the hole. Half hitches can be used to keep extra rope off the ground. Half hitches are often used in pairs. A pair of half hitches is called a double half hitch. A double half hitch is formed when a second half hitch is tied immediately below the first. A double half hitch slides, which allows the user to adjust the tension of the rope. Double half hitches are useful for tying bed rolls. The second hitch we are going to demonstrate is the clove hitch. The clove hitch is used to fasten one end of a rope around a post or tree. As long as the rope is kept taut, the hitch will not slip. To tie a clove hitch, pass the working end of the rope in back of the post or tree. Bring the end in front and cross it over the standing end of the rope, making an X. Wrap the rope around the post again below the first turn. Push the working end of the rope under the far leg of the X. The end will come out between the two loops around the post. The clove hitch does not slip. As long as tension is maintained on the standing part of the rope, this hitch will not come undone on its own. Let's try the clove hitch again. Loop the rope around the tree and make an X. Wrap the rope around the post again. Push the end of the rope under the X. There! Clove hitches are often used to secure the ends of a beaver bag line. The last hitch we are going to demonstrate is the taut line hitch. The taut line hitch is used to make an adjustable loop at the end of a rope. To tie a taut line hitch, loop the working end of the rope around a fixed object. Wrap the working end of the rope under and around the standing part of the rope twice. Wrap in the direction of the fixed object so that the second wrap is closer to the fixed object than is the first wrap. Then, tie a half hitch past the two wraps in the direction of the standing end of the rope. The hitch can be slid up and down the standing part of the rope. Let's try that again. Loop the end of the rope. Wrap the working end around. Then tie a half hitch. Note where the rope enters and exits the hitch. Taut line hitches are especially useful in situations where a rope might slacken due to dampness or increased load. By using a taut line hitch, a camper can tighten a rope without retying a knot. Over the course of this program, we have demonstrated how to tie three knots and three hitches. You now know how to use a square knot to join two similar pieces of rope, 
a sheet bend to join two ropes of unequal diameter, a half hitch to tie the loose end of a beaver bag line, a double half hitch to tie a bed roll, a cloth hitch to string a beaver bag line, a bowline to attach a guy rope to a tent, and a taut line hitch to take up slack in a guy line. Your booklet contains a brief review of what we have covered. It also provides recommendations for additional uses for the knots and hitches we have demonstrated. We hope that completion of this video program has helped prepare you for an outdoor adventure. We know you will have a fun and successful camping experience now that you know the ropes.